So we're going to cover a couple of things today in my video. It's going to be colors, a bit more detail about colors and fonts. So here's my uh, current page that I'm working on with all this beautiful array of colors. And if we look here, we can see I am naming them yellow, pink, green. Those are some standard color names which are used in CSS. Um, and if we go to W3 Schools, it says it shows you this example. And it turns out there's like 140 of them. So if you want to use um, Alice Blue or Blue Violet or Cadet Blue, these are all, you can just use the name, it just works. Uh, but that is only 140. We'd like to have a lot more colors available to us. And that's really what this part of the video is all about. Um, we specify it by color. So, you know, in art, we make colors by mixing primary colors. And um, in HTML, the primary colors are red, green, and blue, RGB. So this is a nice little interactive that shows you. Uh, we've got a scale, goes from zero, which is zero red, to 255, which is all the red. And we've got a similar scale for red, green, and blue. So that's the reddest red that you can red. That's all the red, all the green, which makes yellow. Take away all the red, we get ooh, that nasty shade of green. Uh, let's add in some blue. That's green and blue combined. So there's zero to 255 of each of those. So we can use that directly in our own um, example here. So instead of having green, I'm going to go RGB and I'm going to have uh, all of the red. Uh, we wanted yellow it was all the red, all the green, wasn't it? 255 five and no blue. So that should give me a really nice shade of the, the most yellow that we can. Uh, right there. Ouch. So we can also do transparency with RGB, but it's not RGB, it's RGBA. So this is an option. We've still got the three numbers for RGB, but then we've got a transparency value that goes from zero to one afterwards uh, to give you your opacity, your transparency. Uh, but I won't bother doing that right here. So you can choose um, whatever color you want, uh, and uh, you can find whatever way to choose your colors that you want to do. That's all good. Um, you'll also see a lot of hex being used. For, they use it right here. So Antique White has got this code here. Well, strange enough, that's the exact same code as these RGB values, but in base 16. So we're used to base 10, where we count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. Uh, computers, for one reason or another, work well when you use base 16, which goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, etc. Uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. So this scale, of, these three are exactly the same, zero to 255, but FF is 255 in hexadecimal in base 16. So we'll do, be able to do exactly the same things, all the red, all the green, none of the blue is yellow, and these, are, these numbers are zero to 255, but in base 16. And that's what it looks like with the hashtag in front of it, means it's hexadecimal, and we can use that directly here. So if I wanna use this one, FFFF98. So let's go and use that color. Uh, get rid of that. And it's going to be hashtag. Hashtag FF red, FF green, 98 blue. Control S. Alt tab. Uh, alt tab. Yep. And this one. That was that slightly less yellow shade of yellow because we've got a bit of blue mixed into it. That yellow on yellow is really unpleasant, isn't it? Anyway, we'll fix that later. So that's pretty much what you need to know about colors. Um, in terms of mixing colors, I actually recommend sometimes that we use a, a service called Paleton or a website called Paleton. Uh, Paleton lets you find complementary colors, colors that work well together. And it gives you a nice little color wheel here. And um, you'll see it says, these are colors which work well as a theme for a website, for instance. And we go, oh yeah, that's nice. Or we can, we can muck around with it a little bit and alter those colors a little bit. You can also choose uh, to have, uh, there's options over here for how you're going to um, have a multiple amount of colors on your page. And under this tab, it gives you all of the codes in HTML. So. We had that anyway. I wonder why it did that. That was annoying, wasn't it? Never mind. We've got the codes right here anyway. So these are the hexadecimal and RGB numbers for those. So there's a good way of finding complementary colors. Enough on that. We'll get to play around with that a little bit. 
Also, I want to look at fonts. So um, we are comfortable with using the fonts that we've got already built in, like Arial, Helvetica, Times New Roman, blah, blah. They're kind of boring, though. And it's nice to have a bit more variety. So a good way to achieve a bit of variety is to use Google Fonts. Google Fonts. Wait patiently a second. Uh, and if we go here, Google has got a whole bunch of fonts which are free for you to use. And um, the good thing about these is that because they're actually stored by Google. So they will work on any browser. It doesn't matter what fonts the person has got installed on their computer. Um, they this will import them and make them available to use. So Roboto is a very standard Google one. Festive is awful. Look at that, that's terrible. Let's use that one. So if we click on uh, Festive, this is how we're going to use this nasty cursive font. Um, right here, I already had selected the style because I've already been here, but I'm going to select this style and that's now available in this list over here. I can take these, this little bit of code here Control C, because I'm going to put that into my HTML, and then that will then be available in my page. So that's going to go up here, right where I am, right there. Control V, and then just tidy up my indentation because that's important to keep indentation tidy. So this has made that font available in my page, and now I can go over here and just scrolling down a little bit, it says right here, this is the code we need to specify that particular font, control C, back to my CSS and where I had previously selected Arial and other boring fonts, I now control V, I've got that fun festive font and it's going to fall back to cursive if that doesn't work. So control S, uh, make sure I save this one as well, control S and how does my page look now? Not great. That's almost completely unreadable. Um, there's nicer fonts that you'll be able to find uh, on, on the Google site here. Okay. Um, and I think that covers everything that I'd wanted to. So there you go.